Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. At the end of the last episode I'd had a rather spectacular landing around about here on my new Holmium um, planet and the because there wasn't because it was my first trip here the rocket didn't have anywhere to land so it sort of yeah landed spectacularly and scattered everything over a wide area all around here. So in order to get this sort of area tidied up I uh, dropped down a roboport and put down all these chests over here and got the robots to just pick everything up and shove it in these chests. Now one of the downsides of doing that is it means everything gets a bit shuffled. You end up with a lot of sort of random stuff in random chests and it's a bit disorganised. But never mind, that's not that's not too much of a problem. And then after that, um, and, I, and I powered all that using a um, one of the burner... Have I got, I've got them in my inventory still. On the burner power generator thing. So I just chucked some spare rocket fuel in that and left it ticking away to, build, to produce some electricity. And that worked quite nicely. Um, and then in order to get this, the, all of the stuff to somewhere a bit more useful, because I mean this, this place I've, I've landed here, it wasn't too bad. There's a big patch of iron and a nice patch of holmanite. But the big problem with it was that there was um, all it's, it's really really swampy around here. We've got all this all this water that. I just had to, I'd have had to fill in with um, with landfill, and that would mean going off and getting this stone and making landfill from it. But that's all the way down there, and that would have been awkward and so on. So I decided rather than getting started up here in this what what is a kind of awkward place, I'd build a railway line and I'd transport all of the stuff I was I'd pulled out of the rocket by train, and this took several trips because a rocket is many many times bigger even than a four carriage train. And so I built this line going all the way down here, and I used LTN for this because just to make life a bit easier. All the way down to here, where I've started now building up far more interesting stuff. So what I've done down here, the first thing I did, well, I started off with another one of the burner power generators. Here they are down here, these things, because these are these are quite good. They're really really convenient. You can just drop them down, chuck some fuel in them, and they'll produce electricity. You don't need to worry about water. You don't need to worry about any any sort of complications, any sort of way of feeding them cleverly, and they'll burn anything combustible. So you can use you can use wood, you can use coal, you can use rocket fuel, you can use anything. Um, and then from there, I then uh, once I had that power up and running, I then set up this little system here that was it's receiving the um, uranium from Norvis that I was talking about in the previous episode. So we've got here. Let's actually use this mode because then I can then I can uh, actually point at things properly. Down here, yeah. So down here. We've got this. We've received a bit of uranium, so we can start making the uranium fuel cells. I put I put the iron in there manually for now because at, that, at this point it was things things need to be done manually because I didn't have anything set up properly. My next step was to just that this is a direct copy and paste of the power plant from On Frost. So if it looks familiar, that's why it is. It's exactly the same as the one on Frost and pretty similar to the one on Norvis as well. Um, and so I made up these. Um, fuel cells I chuck them in there by hand and they're just trickling round and round and and as usual I've got the um, the steam tanks over here which as you can see are absolutely full at the moment I've got them wired across to the uh, to the, the the actual reactors over here so the theory is the reactors should stop burning fuel when the um, when the steam tanks are full now I don't think these steam tanks are actually quite big enough judging by the way they're all completely full um, but then that's because my base isn't really using very much power yet. It's it's quite small. We're only using like 27 megawatts. It's not very big yet. Um, but I'm expanding it quite quickly. But in a, but generally this is the same sort of system we're used to from everywhere else. I did seem to be two of these um, heat exchangers short, and I suspect I was being a bit too precise when I um, loaded up the rocket. And when a rocket crash lands, sometimes you lose a little bit of stuff, and I suspect I might have lost these two. So I've, I've shuffled them around a bit, so the ones that are missing are on the ends of the rows. And that means it doesn't really matter, because we can just use all of the other ones instead. I'm losing a tiny, tiny bit of efficiency in there, but I think this system is probably already has significant inefficiencies from other places as well, so I'm not too worried about that. So that's working nicely. It's it's producing power for the for the entire base. We've charged up a big bank of accumulators up here, so we don't. So <clears throat> that'll provide a bit of extra, um, a bit of extra overhead, uh, a bit of extra spare supply when um, um, uh, as I'm as I'm going. So the actual actually the first thing I did before that was I built up this unloading station along here with all of these um, storage chests, and this was just to allow the train to turn up, 
dump all the stuff from the train into the chest and then go off to get more stuff again. And I've done a bit of sorting in here and I had to do that manually which kind of sucked but I've, um, I've, I've kind of sorted them a bit now so I can tell where stuff is and I can grab that manually when I need it. And now because, because I've got enough power now I can, I've can now set up the robot ports and everything else is getting built automatically. This bit here is another copy paste from my uh, base on Frost. This is the system that was building my um, uh, my my delivery cannon capsules, all the way from coal input for coal liquefaction, all the way across to the delivery cannon over here. So this is simple. This is done and and should just work TM. <clears throat> now one of the things I'm thinking of doing is replacing all of these with um, with oil. Um, what's the word? Oil, 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 re oil refining rather than coal liquefaction because I, whilst I do have the heavy oil in order to kickstart this I don't really want to have to use the coal if I can avoid it because it's um, I feel like it's a slightly more limited resource and it's needed for making plastic and a few other things as well so I'd rather, st I'd rather use the oil because this planet does have decent amounts of that. <clears throat> Then um, I stopped copy pasting from other planets. I built up these these stations. Uh, well, I built the first one and then I copy pasted that because there's no point in doing the work over and over again, is there? And um, flipped them back and forth. So along here we've got a station for unloading. I think this one's probably stone. Uh, yes, this one's stone. This one's copper, although I haven't named it yet. Then we've got um, maybe this one's holmanite or maybe it's coal I'm not sure I'm not sure I need to go through and sort of rethink them and name them all and then up here we've got this one's unloading going to be unloading iron ore which we can smelt into iron and into steel so we've got the single bank here for iron and the double bank for steel and then these will all get fed onto the bus over here and there's some funny business going on here because previously on on frost the iron came in from another planet by delivery cannon and then was here we go like this and was passed along here so this time I'm going to be feeding it the other way and just back onto, onto the bus from here so that, that's um it's going to work like that um, and now so all of this is built up now and this has been quite a weird process actually because normally with Factorio you sort of start off with the very very you start off with an empty planet and no technology so you work through the burner stage you work through the the basic smelting and, and so on um, and gradually build up to more and more clever stuff whereas here I dropped in on this planet I had a completely empty planet but I already had all the tech and I brought lots and lots of stuff with me and the hope was that I brought all the things I would need with me. Now, obviously, that hasn't happened because I'm incapable of planning properly. But in theory, I brought along all the stuff I needed with me. So I brought massive quantities of pylons, of raw materials because I knew I'd forget some stuff, uh, belts of, of the all all of the sort of the the machines for making things. So in here we've got assemblers, we've got chemical plants, we've got smelting machines. For some reason, we've got three space um, assemblers in there as well. I think that was just a, a mistake of stuff I had in my inventory or something. Uh, and then there's down here. There's all the scrap that was picked up from taking the rocket, the remains of the rocket apart. And then up here we've got the stuff for the delivery cannon, uh, communica communications, and um, and pass it, and, and a delivery cannon and another receiving chest for actually sending the the stuff around, and some raw materials that I'm not quite sure where they came from, but I've got them anyway, probably maybe from mining meteorites. So then. I have got this I got the station built up over here. This was this is working. This this should work nicely. We just need some stuff actually coming into it now. So I then moved over where I came over here and this this looked like a, a lovely patch to to run a train out to because we've got stone, we've got copper, we've got holmenite and we've got coal all in basically the same place. So run one train out here and then I can squeeze in some some stations. I, I didn't think this one through properly. I put I thought I'll use this loop here for the stone, and then put the so I put the stone on the on the main line here. And they'll actually know it'd be quite useful to have the copper one down here as well. I, I could have put the copper off this bit here. That might have been more sensible. But I put just put a loop in there. So that's that's fine. It, it'll work. No no need to worry about that. Over here I. I've run this this line a bit close to the ore patches, admittedly. So what I'm probably going to do here is have the coal mine, coal station here, and the holmanite station here. Now this is another of those swampy areas. So the reason I've gone for stone first is because I want to start building landfill, so I can just come in here and slap a load of landfill down on this whole area, just to make it easier to put my miners in. This is, this is a very very swampy planet, and then I can just build up a normal mining station like, like like I've done here with the stone or here with the the copper one's a little bit weird because it was a funny shaped patch but they're all decent sizes as well there's 3.6 million stone there's 2 2 million copper there's 3 million coal 12 million, million holmanite and in theory holmanite should be the one I get through the most of because that's why I've come to this planet 
the only thing they haven't, we haven't got down here is iron. So, but conveniently, there's a massive iron patch up here, just where I uh, near where I landed. So this is going to be straightforward enough. I'll build this line up here and link it in up, and and, and just have have a loop around here and coming back down again. That's nice and straightforward. And then we can we can link all of this. We can link the um, iron mine in from here, and then we can build another holmanite mine here, perhaps later when the um, when the, when the first patch starts to run out. I've also put in my um, rocket launch uh, rocket silo here and landing pad here. Now I haven't put in anything to unload the landing pad yet because I just well I haven't felt the need to yet because I haven't had a, I haven't brought a second rocket here yet, and um, I was quite pl pleased to find out that I um, I didn't have any problems at all with the rocket. Uh, if I drop out of map mode again. Look at the if we look at take a look at the rocket. We've got the capsule obviously because I landed in it. The rocket sections they all came through fine. None of them got destroyed, which is a bit of a relief to be honest, because making those things is quite a long process and requires a lot of different steps and stages and things to put together. And I didn't really want to have to go through all that if I could avoid it. And I, and it only takes thirty three thousand fuel to get back as well compared to the I can't remember how, oh I haven't set where to go. That's to orbit. I'm going to want to go to Norvis. That's a bit more as I expected. 80,000 80, fuel. Okay, so we'll leave that running and, and that can fuel up there. And then there's oodles and oodles of space in the in the rocket. I don't know how much of this I'm actually going to use. In theory, maybe it'd be a good idea to take an enormous quantity of Holmanite back with me, but in practice that'll probably just end up sitting in a box on Norvis and just not really getting used. So I think I probably won't actually take any of this with me. I'll just set up a delivery cannon and take it all that way. That seems kind of silly though. I probably should just bring some back manually. Um, launch, yeah, I'll do that manually. So, so yeah, this rocket, um, actually, that's filling up quite nicely. So, one of the things I did was I put down all these boxes of fuel here. So, there's loads and loads of fuel ready to go into this, and we've used less than half of it. I think I think you fit 480 of these in a yeah, yeah 480. So, we've used less than half, of, or about half the fuel so far. In fact, these are more than half full. So, I think I shouldn't have any problems with getting my my rocket up and fueled. Now, fuel, rocket fuel is one of the things I was less worried about because that can be made from oil, and there's oil somewhere. Here we go. Here's, here, there's an oil patch here, and there's an oil patch here. So these two, I can build up. Um, I can build up mine um, oil mining systems on both of those, and have have another set of rail uh, trains trains going down there. Now, one of the things that did occur to me is I haven't actually brought that many train parts. Um, if we look in here. Learn how to use this, this, the game interface. If we look in here, then we'll see I've only got 10, 10 wagons and three locomotives, plus the ones that are in my um, train up here. Brings me up to 14 and five locomotives, which isn't really enough to make a decent sized train for every single one of the resources because I've got iron, copper, stone, coal, holmanite, and oil. That's six, and I've only got five locomotives, so I can't make. I actually can't make enough trains for this. So this is going to be um, unless I, you know, start making them out of raw materials, which, to be honest, I can. I will be able to do because I'll have steel, I'll have iron, I'll have copper, I'll have, I'll have everything. But you know, I might as well try not to. So what I'm going to do is create. Is I'm going to use LTN. So we'll set up an LTN depot somewhere with sort of two normal trains and one fluid train in it, and those can just. And, and those, and then LTM will happily to tell them where to go and, and bimble them around, uh, unload, taking, carrying, carrying all the stuff around. I seem to be a bit short of um, filter inserters, which is a bit of a concern. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I've got five of them left, and I need a lot more than five for all of this, these stations down here. So, sadly, I am going to have to build filter inserters. I've also not got remotely enough chests for all of this, so I'm going to need to, and I've not got enough iron to make them, but. You know, I'm going to have an iron patch over here fairly soon. Although, actually, hmm, that's going to be slightly problematic because I'm not going to get iron until I've built up the station up here, and I don't have all the bits I need to build up that station up there anymore. So, I might have to come and borrow some of these um, these inserters from one of these stations. That's a bit of a shame. Um, I should have planned slightly better than that. Okay, so that's pretty much how far I've got at the moment. I think I've made. I feel like I've made quite a good start on this. We've got the um, we've got the, the pa we've got power. That was slightly frustrating to put together because what's it complaining about? Oh, oh yeah, those. It was slightly frustrating to put together because I was really limited on power. My robo ports weren't being fully powered by these two burner generators. Um, so 
it was it was a bit of a there was a bit of waiting required to get this to, this together. But then once that was put together, once I got the uranium in, power suddenly stopped being an issue. I and mean, as you can see, I can make 466 megawatts from here. It's it's not going to power is not going to be a problem. <laughs> uh, and then once that was done, it was all relatively simple. It was a certain amount of thought was required in trying to decide the best places to put things. I mean, I built up my basic base down here because it was a large area that wasn't too swampy it was i was basically t i was considering either here or possibly over here this looked like quite a good area as well because there's some holmanite and some stone over in this area a big another big patch of stone there a couple of small patches of iron ore um, and so on there's, there's a reasonable amount of ore around here and this was a big area without any um any swamp but over here seemed to work quite well and it was convenient for these patches as well and i wasn't sure i've got i've got a lot of rail um there's like two 2.4 thousand left in the in the train over here. I can't remember how much I came with, um, but I wasn't. Sh you never. It, it's hard to, hard to be sure how far it's going to go. It's one of those things that you start putting it out and you th and um, and it seems like you've got you've got thousands of it and it's going to go forever. But then you, as you start placing it down, you realise actually you can get through it quite quickly. So I didn't really. Yeah, I didn't really want to uh, risk running out of rail. But this seems like quite a good place. There's another massive holmanite patch up here, and some more iron, and more holmanite and copper. So, if necessary, I can always I can extend this further upwards just to get more of the the resources I need. So, I think this is quite a good place to start. I also don't expect my my um, base to get much bigger than this. I do need to look at the holmium um, processing, which is a is a fairly big job. And um, there's a lot of steps for that, as you can see on the diagram here. Um, I'm going to have to run it through quite a few different steps and I'm going to need to import um, the Vulcanite as well from 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 Norvis so I'll, I'll need to get that set up and communicate and two-way communications are running for, uh, for for bringing in Vulcanite and uranium and getting rid of the uh, the Holmanite but that's that's not actually that's not difficult I, I, I can do that without any any problems I'll, I can get that get that up and running um, but it's all of these steps sort of running along here where we're making these these um, cation um, it, it looks the, the the game calls them cation beads because there's no dash in it, but I'm pretty sure they're actually cations. Um, and then, but then we've got to crush the um, the the uh, holmanite. We've got to wash it. We've got to powder it. We've got to bar it. We've got to. Oh no, we don't need to plate it because uh, presumably, let's just check this before I say, say it with too much certain certainty. Um, presumably, we ship it in in bar form in the same way as we did with the. Um, Beryllium. So there's beryllium ingots. That, oh, and you can ship beryl itself. Okay. Scrap, core fragments. I don't want core fragments. There we go. Holmium ingots. So we're going to need to keep it in the ingot form in order to ship them. Um, which isn't a surprise. I, I learned that one on the on the with the, with the beryllium. Um, that's fine. I can, I can do that and then and then turn them into bars on another planet or on the space station. We can ship the ore, but I don't think I don't see why we would. Um, presumably one or what. One ingot is takes several ore to make it. Let's check that actually. Ten powder um, means twenty holmanite, washed holmanite, twenty crushed, forty holmanite. Yeah, okay. So there's definitely no point in in um, in shipping it in in the bar form. That's uh, sorry, in the um, in the in the ore form. We definitely want to ship it in ingots. So that'll get so that'll get us a lot more per delivery cannon. I don't know why my receive signal receivers haven't popped up over there. That's a bit of a concern because I'm definitely going to need those. <clears throat> and I didn't see any of those while I was going through here. So I th maybe they got destroyed on landing? That's... I mean, I'm pretty sure I put some in. I can't see them. They haven't been put out over here. So that's the transmitter. Okay, that's fine it doesn't isn't needed there but it is a transmitter yeah so i think my receivers must have been destroyed which is odd because i thought you were always i thought the rules were that you always ended up with at least one of everything unless i've got it in my inventory oh yeah no, they're in my inventory <laughs> i've got seven of them okay no problem there then that's that's not an, no, no issues there i'm gonna have plenty of receivers i just need to put them in place so my plan is much like i did on frost is to have the um, holmanite process the, the ore for that planet which was um Cryo, cryonite on, on frost initially and then I did beryl afterwards but cryonite initially in this sort of area so I'll do the holmium in this area hopefully I'll be able to fit the whole thing in and there won't be any difficulties um, um yeah and it should should be fairly plain sailing I, I feel like I am most of the way there I didn't bring anything like enough pipes I noticed um, I failed completely there I massively underestimated how many pipes I was going to need for all of this and and 
all of this and I ended up having to make some and I still haven't got enough so but that's again that's just iron I'd, I'd things that only take one ingredient and, and where that's raw material I, I'm not too worried about because that's 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 trivial I don't, it's it's not it's not difficult it's not difficult to do I don't mind making them on the other planets things like um, rocket sections I don't really want to have to make here if I can avoid it because that would be a massive faff and I seem to have had exactly the right number which is kind of scary because I'm, I mean, I'm glad I didn't lose any of them Right, so that's where I've got to. I feel like I've made some good progress here, making this um, my third, fourth, fifth, fourth home. Norvis, Orbit, Frost, Mjokin, and here. Fifth, fifth home. Uh, so there's, there's two more mines to make here, over here for these for the coal and the holmium. Holmanite. And one up here for the iron. I think it's going to be my priority because I need a lot. Of, I need some iron for, to, to finish off making the, making the whole base. Um, and then I'll be ready to start actually shipping the stuff out. And once that's done, I can start thinking about actually making the energy science packs because that obviously is the um, the long-term goal of all of this and is why I've come off to this strangely purple planet uh, with all the swamps and, uh, and, and so on. <coughs> so, that's me for now. Um, time to go out and make some more mines, lay some more railway line. And, and uh, as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.